Exhibit A, baby girl heartache. Turn baby, 42 hours old. Went into seizure six hours ago, brought into the intensive care, diagnosed with obstruction of the small bowel. I'm still amazed you're actually in the same room with a patient. People don't bug me until they get teeth. Exhibit B, baby boy Howsome, another term baby, 48 hours old. Brought into the NICU three hours before the heartache baby. Fever of unknown origin, 101 degrees, trending upwards. Wow, that is amazing. You hung out in the OBGYN lounge all morning and heard about two sick babies. It's eerie. Don't touch that. All right. We have an infection spreading in the hospital. <laughs> These kids have totally unrelated illnesses. They fell sick within four hours of each other. They had the same delivery rooms, maternity rooms and neighboring, so transmission's possible. They have the same symptoms. The hardy girl has a bowel obstruction. No matter how close their beds are, I'm pretty sure kids can't share blockage. What does bowel obstruction on a chart indicate? Well, normally I'd say it indicates a patient's bowel is obstructed, but I'm pretty sure you have some deeper truth to it impart. It means that some random doctor of indeterminate skill thinks that the patient's bowel is obstructed. Okay, you're upset because they threw you out of their lounge. Look at the x-ray. It's a normal gas pattern. You want? I can get you a key to the oncology lounge. Air in the colon. We're getting TiVo. If it's air, no bowel obstruction. Even if it is air, it could have been there before the obstruction. No. Something's infected both these infants. And you're the only one who put this together because... Because I'm the only one who looked at both kids. I want them isolated. I want the maternity ward shut down. Because you're better at reading an x-ray than a radiologist. Radiologists always overread baby's x-rays, especially if they're asked to rule out a pathology. He read into it what he wanted. Which is exactly what you're doing. You're finding a cluster because you think it's interesting to find a cluster. Two plain old sick babies would bore you. See, this is why I don't waste money on shrinks, because you give me all these really great insights for free. Shrink. If you would consider going to a shrink, I would pay for it myself. The hospital would hold a bake sale, for God's sake. We have an epidemic. Two sick babies. It's very sad, but it doesn't prove an epidemic. How many do? Get up. We're going hunting. For what? Weapons. Twelve rooms, right? That's it? Yep. We've definitely checked the whole floor. Good news. No epidemic. Tragic, huh? Overflow rooms, third floor. This imaginary infection is spread to the next floor? We were just gonna call. Did he get hot all of a sudden? Yeah. Well, you look cheery. What's going on? The heartache and Chen Lapino babies. Their kidneys are shutting down. And the urine tests show no casts. Which means the antibiotics are causing the kidney failure. You're the nephrologist. Which one did it? We'll take them off that one. Don't tell me both vancomycin and aspirin. They both can cause this. There's no way to know which one it is. No test. We can't take them off the antibiotics. They'll, they'll die of the infection. But if we leave them on both the antibiotics, they'll die of kidney failure. So we take our best guess then. Which drug's causing the kidney failure? It's like I said, it's always MRSA in hospitals. Take them off Astrid now. I still think it's the pseudomonas. I vote to take them off the vancomycin. There's no point in guessing. Take one kid off vancomycin, the other off Astrid now. They have the same disease. You want to give them different treatments? What the hell are you doing? Therapeutic trial find the cause of the infection. That's wrong. We have four sick kids, at least. Who knows how many more haven't started showing symptoms yet. We have a duty to these two. If these two have different reactions, we'll know how to save the rest. So you're condemning one of these kids to die based on random chance? I guess I am. Dr. Chase, active be on the monitor. How long? I don't know, it just started. Pulse, fluid wide open. 
Do we have an arterial line? Not yet. Let's get a BP. You can't come in here. Is my baby dying? Mrs. Hartley. Is she dying? Yeah, there has to be. It's not your baby. Fenway. BP 60 over 20. Carbon 180. It's starting to leave effect. Yeah, got it. Still dropping. 50 over 10. Can't hold BP even with three pressers. We're losing pulse. V fib. Shut the blinds. Charging. Set. Clear. Still V fib. Charging. Clear. Charging. Clear. Still V fib. Charging. Clear. Charging. Chase. Time of death, 6.57 p.m. Astrinam doesn't work. Double cover all the other babies with vancomycin. This is a cross section of the Chinlopina boys' myocardium and fibrosis, lymphocytic infiltrates. There was no sign of lymphocytosis in the blood tests. Yes, well, we all had plenty of good reasons to think bacterial. Nobody is scolding you. Unfortunately, all those clever reasons were wrong. It is a virus infecting their hearts. Man, we're screwed. You can't chase down a virus. There's a thousand possibilities. We could run gels, antibody tests. A thousand of them? The kids don't have enough blood. Chase, you're the intensivist. How many could we do before we risk exsanguinating the kids? You're talking vials, not stick tests? I wouldn't take more than five or six. OK, so we have to narrow the thousand viruses down to six. Now, the autopsy's shown us what the virus does. So let's go. What do we know? Ribavirin, then a cyclovir, don't knock it out. Cross out the herpes viruses. Also adenovirus. What else? What else? Keep talking. Well, it, it only seems to hit children. The mothers aren't sick, so. No toxoplasmosis, no rubella. Cross out the entire tort syndrome. You didn't find any lung damage? Nope. None of the paramic severity. Cardiac scarring, people. CMV. Enteroviruses, too, I think. Influenza A. A. Yes. And? I'm putting RSV down to yes. That makes eight. I evolved the blood is pushing it. Pushing it? But we love that. Get the antibody kit, start testing the sick kids. All right, I'll look into whether there are any antivirals for these eight. Wait a second, the, the, the kids on the floor who didn't get sick, are any of them still in the hospital? They got moved to the fifth floor, but they're probably all checked out by now. No, the Limpert boy had a bit of jaundice he's checking out today. I want to test his blood, too. Why? So we need all the information we can get. A healthy kid can be our control group. I'll just tell his parents he can't check out because he has the smallpox. What do we get? Well, the sick baby's all tested positive for Echovirus 11. Great. And CMV and Parvovirus B19. Three viruses. But what's weirder, the healthy kid we tested, he's positive for Echovirus 11 and CMV antibodies as well. And they're infants. They have their mother's blood, their mother's antibodies. So we just learned nothing? Uh -uh. We have half the picture. The healthy kids survived because their mother's antibodies saved them. If the mom had CMV in the past, she'd have the antibodies for CMV. The kid would be immune from it. So we test the sick kids' moms for echovirus, CMV, and parvovirus. And whichever they don't have the antibodies for, that's what's killing their kids. I'll test the mothers. <laughs> 